it up. Just try and make sure that the wind doesn't blow them all away. It's only happened once. So I just, the blue ones are just spacers. They're just trash. And the white one is your actual member. So I take my cap off, take my old membrane out. There's an O-ring right there on top that you want to make sure is there. You either set the membrane on there or in the cap, six to one, half a dozen to the other. But when you put it back on, when you go to screw it down, you just make sure you don't see any any folds while you're screwing it down. I just hand tighten that. I can feel the O-ring just kind of pinch a little bit. I take the electrolyte. You guys are free chlorine, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna fill up the electrolyte to the bottom of the threads. I take the sensor and I just stick it down into it. The electrolyte's totally harmless, not going to hurt you or anything. And then I just hand tighten that. And so that's your maintenance on them. Pretty harmless. Hardware wise, um, what we got going on here is you've got your inlet side. After the inlet side, we tee. We've got that's where the pressure sensor is located. After the pressure sensor, there's a pressure regulating valve which controls the flow rate through the, the sensor uh, chamber. After the uh, PRV, there's a bleed screw so that when you store it in the winter, you can empty the water out. Um, when you're leaving it in use, you leave that closed because you want water to be in front of this uh, while it's sitting on the shelf. Following the bleed screw, you've got a Y strainer. That's just not really an issue around you guys. I don't think you really have sandy soil, but areas like Florida and Texas you have to worry about sand getting in and clogging stuff um, after that it just goes right up into the flow cell interface wise all you got is you've got your PLC comes with the steps on how to operate it right right below and then this is what you're looking at on the inside uh, the back of the PLC, this is where the SD card is stored, where it keeps the Excel files for all your flushing activities. Um, this power supply just has to drop down the power a little bit for the sensor. And then you've got your battery. Um, to charge the unit, you plug the battery into what looks like uh, basically a computer charger. So this is what your home screen will look like. This is your hydrant number. Um, you just t touch that button, touch the, the hydrant number. Um, what's today? 10, 6, 22. Or some people do the date. How, what kind of residual do we want to flush to? Let's say 0.2. 0 0.02 or 0.02. No, no, no. 0.2. 0.2. 0.20. 0.20. Um, so, as I mentioned, this will test your horn menu. This is where your settings are all at. This is the general settings here. Um, this is the data logging. This is okay. How, how often am I going to just grab a reading and store it? So right now it's set. I'm upside down. You want to set that on top of the hydrant? No, nah, that's all right. Yeah, hour, hour, how, minute, how, minute. How many, how many uh, samples do you get? So per, it, it's per. per uh, it's continuous. You put the that little white right. disc in there. How, yeah. how many samples do you get per membrane? You're gonna get three to four months minimum on your membrane. Okay, sampling at what rate? It's continuous. continuous. So it's like okay. an online monitor, okay, so, like in a plant. So it, it'll run. Yeah. If you took one every twenty seconds. Yeah. So oh, it, okay. it, so it's not it's not using anything okay. in it. It's more of a pass fail. Okay. So every week or two, you're going to want to calibrate the unit, sure. which is you put it somewhere where you know you're going to have good water, yep. a higher residual. You take you walk up, you turn on the water, you're watching it. You take a hand yep. sample like you would have used to do. Yep. And you compare yep. your colorimeter to what the yep. electronic piece is telling you. So I set that to 10 seconds. Um, there's no SD card in it. 
that's a mistake. I think I got one in my backpack. Uh, other hardware wise what we're looking at is I told you how to get to the flow cell this is the new flow cell style that I mentioned that if you ever wanted to add another sensor all you gotta do is take the cap out it's just got two pins it slides in it turns the pins hold it from shooting out under pressure and then you plug in the cord here so that'd be the same thing if we want to test fluoride we can put a fluoride sensor in there and exactly cool. you just take it out and that that's the difference between the old style plant analyzers and this is you don't have to replumb everything. The old way would be you'd have to find a new way to plumb it, get a new analyzer, and we did that for years and it was a major pain in the butt to, oh, I, I want to add the pH sensor to, with my free chlorine. It's like, oh man, what a headache. So this is the data logging. I'm just going to go back a screen. ESC always takes you back. Max flush length. This is just. If you didn't want to run for more than a certain amount of time at that, hey, don't spend more than 30 minutes at that hydrant. You can type in 30 minutes here, and what it's going to do is after 30 minutes, it's just going to tell you, beep, 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 move on. I've got that disabled. Uh, well, what's, this, what's this set to five minutes? Okay, cool. Well, no, I want to see I want to see it run until it gets point two. It ain't going to run that long. And we can trick it afterwards. Yeah. Um, to, to simulate it. Time clock maintenance. Today is the 6th. Is it 2 o'clock? It is 2 o'clock. All right, cool. Uh, adjust flushing parameters. This is if you ever wanted to flush. If you ever wanted to flush on turbidity and chlorine, you can just add the turbidity sensor, and this is where you would say, I want to flush off that also. Right now, I just have it flushing off the chlorine. Free chlorine is enabled. Um, turbidity delay, buffer delay. What this just means is that the buffer delay just means that it has to be right or wrong continuously for three seconds. I don't want it to just see point two, boom. Like I want it to see point two, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Sure. Then it's gonna then it's gonna go. Uh, the run delay. This is um, more pertinent to uh, if you were using the hose in between sites. You're going to want to add a run delay. You're going to want the Clear unit to get to make sure that you're clearing the water from the last side out. Go back. So we're going to be flushing this hydrant as this thing's on, correct? Yeah. All right. Yep. No. Um, so flow we, settings. We don't have to pull until we get point two out of that. you got to get point two out of the barrel. So you can, you can guess on your flow rate, and it'll totalize the gallons used, or if you know that if you only use one style hydrant, it's called 1460. Say 2.5? Huh? 1460 out of 2.5? Yeah. That's 60 PSI. Huh? Yeah. Um, this is the sensor menu. And so th these are all red right now. That's because none of them are plugged in. I'm going to take this guy. And so there's a peak on it that it'll only let you plug it in one way into the sensor so you don't have to worry about bashing your pins or anything. Is that screw in there then? Yeah, so it slides in and then it's just got a, a screw to stop it from falling back off. And so what you'll see on this front screen is my chlorine just turned on. It's going to see a little bit of a residual until we run some water across it. And I'm going to take my sensor, I, I align my pins vertically slide it in turn it 90 degrees and now those pins are holding it so it won't shoot shoot out and you can see my the the residual is already going down but that's just because we just charged it up for the very first time so I'm gonna press ESC on here and then No, I think we're good. You get a better barrel pressure of the hydrant directly on the barrel as opposed to the hose. But sometimes if you're in a weird position. What's that? It's just going to bleed out. Yeah. Do you want to flush the hydrant out of the steamer or the... Uh, I would flush the out two and, and two and a half. half.
Mr. J. Come on. Tonight you won't. Did I you get cold the, tonight? This was the going to drop. I don't know. I don't even see what I see. Man. I'm in this thing. You guys bow or? <clears throat> you guys don't make these. No. Well, it's like we should. You got to buy the patent off him. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the muffler shop and got some muffler. <laughs> not kidding. That's, That's awesome. Is. That's not great. kidding. He was not kidding about that one. Just a little knife tape. Yeah, you gotta loop that one up. So I'm gonna press run on here. <clears throat> so right now it's seeing already a. See, this is how this all came about with us. Was we wanted we wanted to be able to do something like this, have it reach a a, 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 a threshold, and then just set itself on. Just maintain chlorine, yeah, because we got some industrial parks. Well, water gets old, and we get complaints out of it, and it's like it's trying to find time to get out there. And, Pull that water on a regular basis. Yeah. Like going deep. Yeah. Yeah. You almost need a guy that's just dedicated to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.